up this time, it's your boy Sean. <laughs> Greetings and salutations, Wikimaniacs, and welcome back to Reddit on Wiki. It must be Mondays, because I am your host today. It is I, the Punny Pinoy John. With me, as usual, are my co-hosts, Josh and Sean. What's up, boys? How's it going, man? Hello. Been some time since we've chatted. <laughs> all of all three of us, what? at least. Yeah. Full One disclosure, week. I promised the cat, but we're recording a day before we get the cat, so... Yeah. I ruined it for Sean. Yeah, ruined it for Sean. Sorry, Sean. We had solid plans for Wednesday. It was going to be me, Josh, and the cat. And then John had to be like, we can't miss a recording. I have to be in it all. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I missed so, too much already. That's true. You, Yeah. You, have you missed a lot? Oh, you did miss like a whole solid month. Yeah, yeah. I missed two. Two or yeah, well, a whole month, actually. A little bit, yeah. But uh, to, to make up for it, I'll, I'll record a video of the cat and put it at the beginning of this YouTube video. So <laughs> any listeners want to see the cat, you can go to our YouTube Because Sean's page not going to watch that video. <laughs> I was going to say, you should just put it on Patreon exclusive. <laughs> I'm not going to whore out my new kitten. <laughs> yeah, truly whore up your OnlyFans for the cat. <laughs> Only kittens. <laughs> yeah, only kittens. Horrible person, Sean. <laughs> that would be a great website. People oh, admit, for that. It's not too late. If Squarespace was a fucking sponsor, we could uh, we could plug there, but don't use Squarespace. Yeah, we're holding them <laughs> Not hostage. until they pay us, at least. <laughs> oh, man. So before we get started this week, and just full disclosure, at this time of this recording, it is June 28th, 2022. It's been a few days since Roe v. Wade was overturned. And if you listen to the episode we had with Sienna two weeks ago now, you may have heard the beautifully recorded pre-roll that Josh did. Josh did an amazing job, by the way. It's the first time that we've been together, like all of us collectively talking since, this, since the decision was made. And I asked the boys if they were comfortable about talking about this prior to recording. And um, I just wanted to ask you guys if you had any messages or if you had something that you wanted to say and how you feel about it. I just felt like it was good to, to uh, discuss. Yeah. I mean, as a Canadian, I feel I have the luxury of having a distance perspective from it because we obviously have abortion. It's legal here, which I am grateful for. It's just a, it's a health and safety thing that needs to be implemented in every nation across the world because it's, it's, I don't know, people call it, you're killing a life. You're not really, you're in many cases, you're saving a life, a woman's life. And the decision to take that away in America is it, it, it's it's heartbreaking because it's like so many women and especially women of color and people in poverty are going to suffer and probably lots are going to die because they can't get the proper operation to have an abortion that could save like could save their life, basically, because there are many cases where I, I don't know. And this is right on the spot, too. Sorry, I apologize if I'm getting any facts wrong, but there are there are cases where. I think it's ectomic. Eptoc? Eptomic sounds right. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I apologize if I'm getting that wrong, but there are cases where it's dangerous to keep the baby in the woman's body. So taking the fetus out is saving her life. I'm, I'm getting worked up. <laughs> You're fine. Full disclosure, John told us five minutes before we started, so I don't have any talking points. But yeah, I, I don't know. It, it, it saddens me to see and it worries me because I know... Canada follows this, the United States in a lot of cases, and I, I don't want this to be one we follow you guys in. Like it, it's just it's just so disheartening. So uh, those are my th initial thoughts on it. Sean? Yeah. I mean, like Josh said, at the end of the day, this is we're not experts in this. Uh, we kind of just, you know, go by what we've known. And then, you know, when you guys correct us, uh, it was uh, a really shitty and scary way to start the weekend last week. And this is coming from, you know, proud Texan proud Catholic. Like as a kid, I thought abortions, they're fucking evil. They're bad. They're bad. And then you kind of grow up and you kind of like the world is not black and white. And if you think it's bad, that's okay. But you know, what you think does not have to enforce policy. You know what I mean? On something like that, that's a personal decision control over what if you think abortion is evil that's like don't get if it. it's not affecting you yeah. mm -hmm. then it doesn't fucking matter like don't take away other people's choices because because you're an asshole i don't know i don't fucking know it, it's yeah. really ridiculous like wholeheartedly like i i consider myself very catholic i as a teenager i went to like march for life type of shit but you, you know if you believe that abortion is like evil and you're killing life that's fair but i mean it's a little bit naive. Yeah. There's yeah. so many circumstances where it, it has to be done. 
yep. whether you like it or not. And even if it doesn't have to be done, there are lots of cases where it should be done. The foster system in America, not great. You know what I mean? Uh, adoption rates, uh, I don't have the statistics in front of me, but I imagine adoption rates are not high. Every time I see one of those marches for life, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they interview how many kids do you have? And they'll be like, oh, three. How many of those have been adopted? Oh, zero. It's like practice what you preach. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so it's really fucking fucked up. Like Josh said, I don't really have any talking points off the top of my head. It seems fucking insane. And we mentioned this like way back when on John's hiatus, like it seems like we're inching closer and closer to handmade tale. I never yeah. watched like the show entirely, but I kind of know the gist just from side watching when my wife watches. But it, when she started watching that show, I was like, dude, there's fucking, this is ridiculous. There's this isn't the future, like this is present time. This isn't like in the past or whatever. Yeah. And I used to think, oh, that's so fucking crazy and ridiculous. And now it seems like we're fucking moving closer and closer to that shit. They're fucking, yeah. they did this. Now they're trying to take away same sex marriage. They're trying to take contraceptives. It's like, whoa, why? Yeah, well, the separation of church and state is non-fucking existent. They're, they just ruled that teachers or whatever can lead their students in prayer. Prayers. Like, yeah. What the fuck? Like, yeah. Look, again, I'm Catholic. I like being Catholic. I like being Texan. But I feel like the number one thing to both Catholics and both Texans, when you look at the, the heart of all of it, is that we are blessed with free choice. And everything that we do as a state, unfortunately, goes against that. So it's it's like free choice is only free choice when it has to deal with like certain things like fucking hot topic, but guns right now, right. you know, like, oh, yeah. you can't fucking take my rights away as guns, you know, you can't fucking take my rights, but you know, women, yeah, we can take their control. No big deal. Like yeah. what the fuck? Like make it make sense. You yeah. know what I mean? I saw a quote. They were like, yeah, we want to protect kids until they get into school. And that's basically... Yeah. Dude, what they've fucking ruled this week. Huckabee's stupid ass daughter was like, we want to make sure a fetus is just as safe in the womb yeah. as it is in a school. And the I'm like, fucking... bitch, did we not just have like the biggest fucking school shooting? I, I know if it's not politically correct to call women bitches, I call everybody bitches. I don't know. That's <laughs> probably just a me thing. I need to check myself. Probably. I call lots of men bitches too, guys. It, everybody could fucking get it. I don't think anyone's going <laughs> to come after yeah. you for calling her a bitch. Cause I don't know. I, if I, anyone I know some is. people get mad about bitch and <laughs> sure, you know, that's, sure. that's something I need to correct. But, you know, I will call John and Josh bitches too, you know? He does. He does. I he call does. inanimate objects bitches, uh, you know. Dubs yeah. his toe. <laughs> Everything could get it. Yeah, it's a fucking table's a bitch, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's, but yeah, okay. get back on the point. It's fucking ridiculous. I don't know. Yeah. So as an outsider, and this could be completely off base, but for me, it seems like, I want to say the majority of Americans disagree with this ruling. Even yeah. Republicans, I feel there are like, sure, you got you got Republicans that obviously agree with this, but there are a ton of Republicans that disagree with this. I feel that's a thing, right? From what everything I've been seeing across all of the social media platforms, and, and to be, like I said, I'm an outsider, I, didn't, I might not know, but from what it appears, most people are against this. So I just don't understand how it got passed, how this is the way we're going. I don't understand. Yeah, that's kind of uh, opening up a can of worms. So do you mind if I close it off? Because I feel like it's it's going to it's gonna open up so much other stuff that we yeah. might I think talk we about. We could spend a whole episode talking we about could, like, We could, we could. I mean, could. and we're not experts again. We should get an expert on. Yes. Yeah, that would Absolutely. be good. That would be, be great. great. Yeah. The last thing I will say, just as a, if you can call it a a light in the darkness, uh, shout out to like states like California and, and yeah. New York. And I think Canada even have basically become safe havens for people who want to get abortions. There's probably a few other states I'm, I'm missing, so I apologize if I am. But there there's are a good states, amount of states. There's a good amount of states that will not prosecute you and will not work with states that want to prosecute you for getting an abortion. So shout out for those states for actually living up to the freedom that Americans espouse. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of you guys for taking a stance as well. And Sean, like your different background and your different belief from us, it's it's welcoming. Hearing you say that, yes, you're a devout Catholic. Yes, you're a devout Texan. Yet you still see the error in this. That's what I like to hear. Like people can have different thoughts about it. People can have different opinions about it. But, you know, I, I, I'll close it off just because, like we said, we can we can spend a whole hour of this. But we are a comedy podcast, so we'll try to to make you guys laugh throughout these dark times. But pretty much at this point, I feel like it's not even about abortion itself anymore. It's just about being able to control women and 
what they can or can't do and strip the resources that they can have to help them make a proper decision. Personally, like what Sean said, if you feel some type of way about abortions, that is your right. And I absolutely respect that. And, I, and I'm sure Josh and Sean feels the same. But please don't impose beliefs on others and make it to the point that it has to be law and to make it an offense for women to have a choice in what they can do with their bodies. And you're reverting the country that I love. I serve this country. And I think the freedoms and the, the beliefs that it had, you know, growing up, I was like, fuck, this is amazing. And now you're turning it to this some archaic, backwards ass country to live. And it, it's a damn shame. Nope. And I know it's three guys saying this and, and it might not matter much, but we'll do what we can as a show to at least create awareness, like what Josh already had done with the pre-roll. But to the women out there, to the women listening to our show, just wanted to say we're sorry for everything that you're going through right now. And of course, we can leave all the resources that we have already up. And if you want to support, and I guess thank you for giving us the airtime to at least address this and we can kind of get on the show. All right, the menu for this week. For starters, we go to r slash relationship advice where a best friend asked if user could be a sperm donor for her surrogate, but plot twist, he is in love with her, but she has no idea. Oh, spoilers. For our main courses, we go to r slash petty revenge where a divorced lady who made dating miserable for her ex. We then head over to r slash let's not meet where the poster may have encountered a Ted Bundy wannabe. Ooh. And for dessert, we go to our This Day in History for July 11th, where we travel 60 years back in time with the release of To Kill a Mockingbird, written by our good friend Alex from Weird Distractions Podcast. She wrote Wait, that book? Alex? Yeah. She wrote, she that. wrote that fucking <laughs> book? That's, That's crazy. crazy. Good shit, Alex. We should be paying her more. <laughs> yeah. We tried paying you more, Alex. You refused. <laughs> <laughs> She was literally negotiating down. <laughs> I know. I was like, this is the weirdest negotiation I've ever had in my life. <laughs> Me in the corner. Yes. He's like, yes, take <laughs> less. No, just kidding, Alex. <laughs> Before we get to our stories for today, if you would like to submit your own story, head on over to our email at reddit on wikipod at gmail.com or follow us on our socials. All links are on the show notes. If you want to support us, feel free to tell your friends, leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Good Pods. And if you want to support us financially, head on over to our Patreon. Links on the show notes below. Like our amazing patrons, Vina, Lindsay, Gabby, Aaron, Taru, Alex, Valentina, Micah, Simonova, Katie, Holy Lorena, oh. Christina, Dan, Phantom Fox, Susan, Free Gnome, Sarah, Marianne, Miss Doolittle, Jasmine, and our brand new patrons, Alexis, Michelle, Danielle, Crystal and Jen. Yo. Holy shit. I've missed some episodes. <laughs> yes, Holy <you> shit. Did. <laughs> Welcome, patrons. Again, my Venmo Thank is you. at Sean. <laughs> they don't have to Venmo you. They're already paying us. Yeah, but then you get the extra benefits. <laughs> the extra benefits. <laughs> also, shout out to our super special shout out to our $10 patron. Oh, yeah. Just so you know, you can ask for a cameo at any point. I don't know if you want one or if you're just super nice and supporting us at $10, but that is available to you. Yeah. True that. And anybody else that signs up for 10 If you want Sean to wish you happy birthday, you can yeah. get that. Have him sing to you. I Would can dance. do that, guys. <laughs> I'm bad at dancing now. Ah, uh, no, they don't, hey, don't sell yourself too oh. short. You're probably way better than us combined. Here's what I would demand. I would demand John sing happy birthday and Sean dance to it. There we go. I'll be like those e. TikTokers that do dance choreography to the ringtones. I'll do that to John's <laughs> voice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but Josh just has to be doing something in the background, though. Just looking handsome in the background or something. Uh, taking off his shirt. The background <laughs> yeah, of my slowly. dance will just be Josh without a shirt on. That would, well, they would stop supporting us very quickly. <laughs> if you look at the TikTok comments, I think I would disagree with you, Josh. <laughs> Again, thank you for all our awesome patrons. Your contribution keeps the show running as well as supporting all the other shows in our amazing Cultivate Network. But before we get started, Josh, do you happen to have any comments on YouTube, TikTok, or Discord that stood out to you this week? Yeah, so we got a couple from the episode with Deanna on it. It's been a popular one on YouTube, so uh, yes. shout out to everyone commenting. Uh, Melissium? Melissalum? I think that's how you pronounce the username. <laughs> 
They say leg sweeping is prominent in judo. I learned to do it when I was really young. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> you use your right leg to sweep the legs of the person standing directly in front of you, starting with the outside of their right leg. So it's like a clean sweep. You guys should really try it out. And then I said, Shh, don't give Sienna any ideas. <laughs> I don't think she needs the leg sweep. She has the knife. <laughs> That's true. She has the knife and the, the cleaver in the in the picture I gave her. Um, Actually, someone commented on that on our Twitter that the knife was backwards. <laughs> yeah, it looked weird the other way when I was trying to Photoshop because like half her head is like behind <laughs> We're it. We're like, so wait, why like... is it backwards? <laughs> <laughs> and then Mayo said, I'm so surprised you guys didn't meet in person. How did you meet and how did you start doing podcasts? Do we want to take that or do we want to save it for our one year anniversary for our a and Nah, good call. Maybe we should save it for our one year. For this I, one, I, we'll give a sneak peek <laughs> for the AMA. All right. So here's how we met slash not really met. John's making me do it. Uh, I didn't say anything. <laughs> you said, let's make Sean do it. Am I crazy or did you not say it? No, nah, I, I said, I was just trying to gaslight <laughs> you, bro. <laughs> You're always trying to gaslight me. <laughs> That's our relationship, right? I don't know if I love that aspect of it. <laughs> All right, but here, here's the quick, the quick and easy version. At the time, we each had our own individual podcasts, Shots and Thoughts, The Dumb Found Dead, and Let's Start a Cult. They are still available wherever you get your podcasts, so... Go ahead and listen to them. They're all Cultivate shows. But yeah, we each had our own individual podcasts. We kind of guested on each other's podcasts. And there was a time where the Dumb Found Dead had ended, but John still wanted to podcast. So he kind of came to Josh and I with an idea. Not really an idea, literally just a yeah, name. Was <laughs> he was like, hey, let's do a podcast. Let's call it Reddit on Wiki. We'll and talk I'm, about whatever you want. <laughs> John was like, I don't have a format, but Reddit on Wiki is a good name. And we were like, <laughs> sure, dude, whatever. And then we tried a bunch of stupid shit and nothing really worked until Josh hit gold on TikTok. And then we figured out what the Wikimaniacs wanted. And uh, yeah, that's the short end of it. If you want the long one, again, $25 at Venmo. <laughs> or or wait for our year episode. Uh, yes, so. our year episode and our possibly Patreon exclusive Ask AMA. Me Anything. Yeah, we might be, we're still figuring out what we want to do for one year, but it'll be in August uh, mm -hmm. sometimes. It might be a live stream, so just keep Ooh. your eye out for that. Uh, the final comment I wanted to hit on before we cap it off here is from Daphne. Uh, we were talking about ideas for Sienna's podcast uh, at the end of the episode on that one. And she says, here for Sangria with Sienna. So might be something we have to consider. Going to give Shots and Thoughts a run for her money. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Shots and Thoughts does not exist to a large majority of people. So that's okay. <laughs> I'm sure Sienna already has more fans just from guesting on the two or three episodes she's been on than Shots and Thoughts does. First episode she releases thousands of downloads. Thousands. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. We're claiming her for Cultivate, though. <laughs> oh, uh, yes. No, if I edit it, she has to come with Cultivate. So <laughs> Ironclad. <laughs> yeah, it's the contract. So we'll think about it. I do not have the bandwidth right now, but maybe Josh somewhere down the line. does everything for his show. The only reason this show is successful is because of Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Between work and this show, uh, it's been chaotic. And now we're adding a cat. So we'll see oh how that God. goes. Cat daddy. Oh, boy. All right. That's all the YouTube comments you wanted to read, Josh? Uh, I mean, there's tons, but... Uh, I wanted to give a shout out to the people that are keeping the bit of uh, saying I did great on episodes I'm not in. Uh, I appreciate... Wait, someone did that? Uh, two, people, two people. So far. So far. Oh! I don't love it, but I appreciate it. Uh, Demi, and sorry, I'm trying to find the last one. Oh, there it is. Uh, Yoitso said, just because he isn't here today, love you, Sean. I appreciate it. <laughs> I think. <laughs> The bit lives forever, my guy. <laughs> All right. You boys ready to uh, get started? I guess so. It's like 20 minutes in now. Yeah, I apologize. <laughs> this is going to be a long ep. Wiki Maniacs requested for a long episode, so we're just happy to oblige. And Sean, I promise it's not going to be a sad episode. Thank God. First story for today. This is from r slash relationship advice, where user Buggy Baby Bumper Boats posted my 32 male best friend asked if i would be her 30 female sperm donor for her surrogate and i am in love with her but she has no idea oh. so for a bit of a background we met in college mm. and have been best friends since then we hooked up once years ago it was a drunken exchange and i honestly chalked it up to we were both drunk and in the right place 
She got ovarian cancer that was stage 3 a few years back and survived and has been in remission. However, she had to have a complete hysterectomy. She had mentioned a year ago she was considering surrogacy. She had told me she planned to use a donor as she has been single for a while. Thing is, I am in love with her and I have been for years but she has no idea. I know at one point she had feelings for me but I was seeing someone then and out of respect for my girlfriend at the time, she never acted on it. I feel like before I give her an answer which will be yes, I should tell her how I feel. Yeah. I want to make her dream of motherhood come true and I am honestly touched she thinks so highly of me she wants me to be the father. Regardless of how she feels, I will still donate and if she doesn't still feel the same way, I will love her as my best friend. Guess I am trying to find the best way to ask her and came to Reddit for advice. So how should I handle this? This is so close to being a nice guy. It's, it's yeah. on the edge. I feel well, it could go poorly. It hasn't yet. It hasn't well, yet. Okay. I just mean like if you've been in love with her for years. Yeah. What are you doing then, man? Like yeah. I know you don't want to ruin a relationship, but you're fucking how old? 31? 32. 32. Old enough to fucking just fucking talk, you know, like communicate, yeah. you know, I'm not trying to rag on this guy. Cause I'm sure he's a, not yeah, he's a, probably a nice, nice guy. guy, but like a actual, like a <laughs> legit <laughs> nice guy. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, dude, if you, if you've been in, in love with her, don't wait until like a fucking weird moment like this, you know, now you're putting yeah. like awkward pressure on her. You could have just gotten this out of the way whenever you broke up with your girlfriend or whatever. I don't know. That's so, just my first thoughts. So he's single too, right? Yes, he's single too. I don't see why it should be an issue other than you might lose a friendship, but he's already addressed. She has had feelings for him and she trusts him enough for this. So having a conversation about that should be easy. Feels like yeah. it should be natural, right? And maybe not yeah. natural, but you know, like easy, like you said. Yeah, I, I agree with most of what Sean said. And then to not be a nice guy, uh, Reddit nice guy. <laughs> if you talk to her about it and she doesn't feel the same way, don't be weird about it. Just be like, okay, cool. <laughs> Here's my yeah. sperm anyways. <laughs> yeah, like the guy said, he he's, he's down to love her as a best friend if <clears throat> she doesn't feel the same way, which is good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Respectful. you know. That's how a lot of the nice guy stories. I've been on that subreddit a lot, guys. Oh, I, I <laughs> That's haven't. how a lot of those stories start. <laughs> oh, I thought you've been featured in those subreddits. No, 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 no. <laughs> Purely research for this podcast, but uh, I don't know. I, I would not maybe go through with the surrogacy if she doesn't feel the same way. If she doesn't feel the same way and she still wants to have your genes, I would say just again, just really talk about it because that could be like right now you're saying like, yeah, I'll love her as a best friend. Yeah, well, who, it could mess you up. Who fucking knows? You know what I mean? Yeah. Also, you could be down and then after a few years, you'd be like, wow, this is really difficult to love anybody else when I am, have such like an intimate relationship with this person. And you kind of have a kid. Not really, but you kind of have a kid you with that person. Are, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't really know like how. It might mess with you mentally uh, like, to be like, that's my, my kid. Like, my, that's my kid, genes, my DNA. Unquote. Yeah. Not really, but. Yeah, I don't know. I've never been in that situation, never yeah. will be probably. So I will I will never know the feeling, but I could just imagine that in some cases it might just mess with you mentally to see that someone you care for having your kid. Yeah. Okay. This reminds me of, uh, did y'all watch Master of None? I, I did. It happens in a lot season. of shows, I guess. Uh, it was in Not the- Aziz. It was like in the third season without Aziz, where okay. there was like no Aziz and it was just- oh, uh, That's weird. Lena Wraith or whatever was the main character, his friend. But like, yeah, they're like, She's married to a woman at the time and they're trying to like look for sperm donors. And I was like, whoa, off topic, well, sort of, <laughs> but just like sperm donors and like talking about like the intricacies of like how close is the donor to the family? Not at all. Does right. that mess with the mental of the donor? You know, I've never been in that situation. I've never like intimately or I haven't known anybody in that situation either. So I don't know a lot of the specifics that go into that, but I would say really fucking communicate, get into the details yeah. of how this whole thing is going to work. Because it's a yeah. big life step for sure. It's a good thing that you mentioned that because there is an update actually. Okay. Ooh. So she was hitting on him and was like, I actually want to have your babies. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been hilarious. <laughs> so the update goes, I appreciate all the feedback. Most of you were nice. There was a few idiots telling me I needed to be alpha and be more manly. Okay. But I don't he's not a nice guy. I like this guy. I, I take everything I said back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was going to be, I was waiting. I'm like, Josh is going <laughs> to recant his statements. Yeah. Classic. Anyway, the consensus with my real life friends was I needed to tell her. Good friends. Mm. Uh, we do brunch mm -hmm. on Saturdays because she does yoga Sunday. So we met up this morning. I could barely eat and she could tell something was up. She got worried thinking I was going to say no or something worse. So by the time we took a walk, both of us were nervous wrecks. 
I sat her down and told her everything how I realized I was in love with her several years back but was too much of a chicken shit to come clean. I told her that I never said anything because I did not want to jeopardize our friendship. Her face turned white, then a myriad of expressions came over her face, then she started laughing till tears came down her face. I honestly was stunned. My stomach was in my throat and I honestly thought that almost 12 years of friendship were down the toilet. Then she started crying, sobbing really and she lightly hit my chest. She half laughed, she half laughed, she half laughed, she half laughed. Laughed. Holy moly. <laughs> <laughs> she half laughed and sobbed that she was in love with me too, but she thought that it would also impede the friendship we had and she wanted nothing to screw up what we have. Love we hugged it. and I told her that there is no one in this earth I would want to have a child with but her. We talked for hours. In fact, I just got home. We have decided that we want to focus on us for now. I want us to be at the point that we can do it together. I know that this is in a rom-com and that things could end up not working out for us in the end. However, I am pretty sure there is such things as soulmates as she is mine. Thank you guys and gals for giving me the courage to tell her. Hell yeah, dude. That's good. Man. Best case scenario right there. That That is exactly what Sean said. If you guys had found it upon yourselves to find the courage to say something years ago, you could be four years into a, into a relationship and ready for kids. So just goes to show you communication is key. Bam. Beautifully said, Josh. I'm a relationship expert, <laughs> is what Guru. Josh is saying. Uh, yes, and, that's exactly uh, what I'm saying. I am humbled. I am honored. <laughs> <laughs> There's like a reason why I chose that story. It was pretty much a counter to the, the shittiest one that we've read. Because yep. this girl also had a hysterectomy. Um, but the guy chose to be in her life and be a positive figure in her life. So lesson shows that there's just dick bags in the world and there's also kind of genuine nice people in the world. So I'm really mm -hmm. happy that they ended up together. And I hope that there's an update somewhere that they're together, possibly had the kid that they wanted. So crossing my fingers, hope there's an update yeah. somewhere for that. This story is nicer, but I'm going to guarantee it's not going to go do as well on TikTok. <laughs> I was going to say TikTok's going to hate this before our mental very much needed. <laughs> like, what is this shit? I can't yell at anyone. <laughs> That's true. Every time we post something happy and not, <laughs> it doesn't do well. No, it yeah. does not. Like funny, dirty stories will do like maybe 10 to 15. And then like the Satan mm. stories will get like million views. I'm like, million. oh, <laughs> oh, guys, we are the worst humans on earth. I'm going to fucking burn out if we do this every week. We can't be doing this all the time. Hey, as long as we hit like a quarter, like once a quarter, maybe we'll find like the degenerate shit once a quarter in case we needed like a, a follower's a boost. boost. <laughs> I, oh, I, I hope we I hope we don't find the degenerate. I hope, you know, humanity <laughs> heals and gets better. <laughs> you hope for two too much. Josh. Yeah, I, I do. I possible. sadly do. <laughs> oh God. All right. Ready to move on to the next one? Let's do Hell it. Yeah. This next story is from the subreddit r slash petty revenge where user Bella underscore anima wrote, divorce me while I'm sick. That's fine. Enjoy being single. Mm. All right. So not my story, but a family friend story. I knew this lovely German lady who I will call Heidi, not the real name. She was married to an Israeli man who I'll call douche. Just blank it out, Josh, because we are going to get banned again. Is douche bannable? Not on YouTube, but TikTok they're, they're gonna for say, sure. They're going to say we're bullying douche now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Quick question. Sorry, you said the title was Divorce Me When I'm Sick. Is that what you said? Yep. Divorce Me While I'm Sick. That's Enjoy fine. Enjoy being signal? single. Single. Well, I mean, I okay. Yeah. Okay. I was also thinking the same title. thing, Josh. I was like. <laughs> I think that's what divorce means. Uh, yeah, you're single. <laughs> yeah, but I'm I'm sure the, the rest of the story is better written. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so douche was a douche for a number of reasons. <laughs> he worked with my dad in IT who said he had a hero complex where he would cause disasters at work and then try to be the hero and, quote, save the day. Ugh. We even suspect he caused a huge IT disaster at our national airport while he was working there. Holy he shit. Was, <laughs> <laughs> he was also really creepy. He creeped out my younger sister, calling oh. her randomly and asking to pick her up. Ugh. He was the exact opposite of his wife, who was lovely and sweet and charismatic, and I have no idea how they ended up together. Unfortunately, a while after we made friends with them, Heidi got very sick. Her colon stopped working. She almost died. Thankfully, 
She was in a country with stellar health care who saved her life. So not America. <laughs> <laughs> well but she found, yeah. she found she has Crohn's disease and she had to get a colostomy bag. While she was recovering from her surgery, Douche announced he wanted to divorce. His words were, and I quote, I didn't marry a sick woman. Fuck what you. Fuck? fuck you, man. What the fuck? In sickness that and in fucking, health, you fucking yeah, dickhead. Yeah. Maybe they're not a Christian. I don't know. Yeah, no, but I don't still, know. Jesus. But the sentiment, I imagine, yeah, is there the for same. all marriages. Someone you care. I don't know. We've we've been through this. Someone yeah, you care about. This. You should care enough about to stay with them through sickness. Yes. So they also wrote fucking prick. Yeah. He left her high and dry and very soon was seeing someone else. He lost all the friends he had made in our country with his awful behavior. My family told him he was no longer welcome near us as we were there for Heidi. He finally fucked off back to Israel. Apparently, he had got into quite a bit of debt while in my country and skipped off to avoid paying. Good riddance, we all said. Heidi found her feet eventually. She took a photography and went to university to study it. She did very well for herself and lived happily life free from douche. After about a year, douche contacted Heidi and she told us all about it. Apparently, he was trying to sweet talk her into going over to Israel to go Ugh. through with the divorce proceedings. According to Heidi, your marital status is on your identity card in Israel. Oh. And it's one of the first things a girl asks for to see when you go on a date. Hell yes. <laughs> Why is that not more of a, a thing? <laughs> <laughs> right. Bring that over here. Holy <laughs> shit. That's genius. So when the girls saw he was married on his card, they'd never go for a second date. Fuck yeah. Let's go. So every time he'd call her asking when she was coming over, she'd put a huge shit eating grin on and reply, quote, oh, I don't know. I'm not really in a position to fly with my condition and all. Maybe when <laughs> I get better. Yes. She knew full well he won't set foot back here because his creditors were still looking for their money back. She would just relish in the knowledge that he was getting rejected by all those women he was pursuing in Israel while she chilled with us having a great time. Heidi is doing much better now. She went back to Germany, though still visits my family and her friends from time to time. She's still her awesome self. I don't know what douche is up to now, but I suspect after all these years, he is still a douche. <laughs> well, let's go. I, I I love that law. That's I, I know I joked about it, but like I mean I don't know what the ramifications would that be legally, but for for pieces of <laughs> shit like this, it's, it's a great law to keep them in check. So yeah, I hope he is still single and just living his worst life in Israel. Yeah, yeah. I mean I can't think of a better revenge. Uh, he's home. He can't get out of the country because he owes too much money elsewhere. And he, you know, is fucking pulling a John five times a day with his hand. That's it. <laughs> bam, bam, baby. Hey, not gonna lie. I had you guys in the first half. I knew when I saw that leaving them in this, when they were sick, I was like, ooh, I'm going to get a reaction from this. <laughs> It, I will say with this story, though, it, it did have more of a happy ending, which I was happy with. I mean, she is still, you know, she's still sick, but it sounds like she's living her best life. So, so good for her. And, Absolutely. and fuck that guy. I love that she's well enough to go back and forth between countries and, yeah. <laughs> and, and just, just doesn't go there <laughs> and does not give a fuck. It's like, no, it's okay. I'm still sick. I'm not in a good condition. And the Instagram stories. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, fucking With wherever the fuck. Germany, baby. Because she's got her photography now. So she's got probably got beautiful pictures all over her Instagram Ooh. of all the countries he, she's visiting. Oh, and he's just bet. sitting there at home, sadly jerking it off. <laughs> <laughs> With his fucking ID. Yeah. I'm supposed to be married. <laughs> Tears as lube. Yeah. What a piece of Ew. shit. <laughs> Douche deserves that so yeah. much. Awesome. All right. Next story, we hop on to r slash let's not meet, where user Mickey0323 titled it, Ted Bundy wannabe, let's not meet again. Oh. This happened during the summer of 2015, and I had just graduated high school, and I still lived in my hometown. I was out with some friends, and it was getting really late, like around 1 a.m., so I decided to head home. I stopped by a drugstore close to my house that was 24-7 to pick up some aspirin and snacks the one I went to was in the same parking lot as a supermarket. Remember that? It's important to the story based on what they said. Supermarket. Okay. So I parked my car close to the store and it was empty there. There were no more than two other cars in the giant parking lot and I was nowhere near them. I head in and grab what I can to get quickly because I had this overwhelming feeling of dread the whole time. I felt like someone was watching me, but I couldn't see anyone else there besides me and the cashier. 
Then, after I had gotten everything I intended to buy, I stalled checking out and just went aisle by aisle looking at random things because I thought whoever was out there would leave if I took too long. Really, the whole time I thought I was being paranoid because I wasn't used to going out late. After 20 minutes of that, I pay and leave the store. I get to the door and literally bolt to my car, pepper spray in hand and lock myself in. I turn my head to check the back seat, and right before I could breathe, a sigh of relief because no one was there. Someone tapped on my window. Oh, oh no. Jesus. So I looked around before I left the store near the entrance and no one was around my car. So how did I not see a person there? This is where I really freaked out. I don't know if this person was Ted Bundy inspired or what, but this was odd. He was a very handsome blonde man with slightly long hair and a cast on his arm. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Ted Bundy story, but that's how he baited them pretty much. Oh, good to know. So now my first instinct was to drive off, but he was leaning on the front hood part of my car and I didn't want to hurt him. So I rolled my window down just an inch so he could nope. speak and maybe back up just a bit so I could drive off without hitting him. But no, he stayed glued on my car. Mm -mm, I would just fucking... Run yeah. his ass over. <laughs> Back up, hit that reverse. <laughs> yep. He then asked me if I could help him with directions and look up an address for him. I said, Up uh, your ass. Really <laughs> <laughs> She's at a supermarket, right? She's a supermarket, yeah. Fucking go inside, dude. No way. I'm not buying yep. that shit. I said, I really need to go, sir. Maybe ask in the drugstore. They can help. And then he said, Already went to the supermarket and they couldn't help. Bullshit. Yeah, that is uh, bullshit. That place closed at 8 and there was no way this guy has just been lurking around for 5 hours waiting for some random girl's help. He then went on about feeling really tired and if I could just give him water or food I bought since he had no money. I told him okay and began to reach to my passenger no. side, grab the, grab the chips I got and began to roll the window down slightly. What are you doing? No. <laughs> and like I expected, he moved closer to my oh. window, but he was now off the car, so I hit the gas. Nice. He chased my car, and I heard a scraping sound on the side as I pulled away. Not gonna lie, pretty genius of just baiting him like that. Pretty good. I would've just run him over, but... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't drive directly home in case I was followed and drove down the highway for an hour because I was so distraught over what had happened. I finally got home and my entire side of my car has been scraped from the door almost to the trunk and I'm really sure he used a knife or some sharp object because it was a really rough scrape. I reported the incident but they never found him or any similar incidents in my town. He was watching me the whole time maybe from the windows of the store because how else would he have known I bought food? I also think he hid behind my car so I couldn't see him when I came out. Yo. I feel like I feel like he was trying to get me before I got into my car, but I got in too fast. Good thing she trusted her gut. Yeah. So creep in the parking lot, let's not meet again. <sighs> yeah. I will say this. If you were that sure, I would have talked to a super like the the supermarket, uh, like one of the attendants or something and said, Hey, could you walk me to my car or something like that? Especially yeah. that late. It's like one AM. Yeah, that that's late. So I mean they might not do it, but it, uh, like that would be something I would try at least to hopefully <laughs> avoid getting kidnapped. Good good for her. She used her brains, got out of there. Yeah. It did not surprise me that the police did not find him or yeah, probably course. look for him because he's uh, he's white, guys. What do you expect? White and blonde. <laughs> also, white and blonde. It sucks that like at 1 a.m. if I went to fucking Walmart or whatever, I would not. I don't. You'd feel I would feel fine. Yeah, me too. You know what I mean? So it just yeah. sucks yeah. to think like they have to ask I mean, you don't have to ask, but like it would feel a lot safer if you ask somebody like Josh said. And it just, yeah, oh, that's so upsetting. Like the how unequal life is yeah, and how far behind we still are uh, is, I don't know, man. Like, yeah, listen, I, I wish I didn't have to say it, but no, that, that yeah. is why I went to it because yeah, I'm not blaming no, you. You're absolutely right, though. Yeah. But you're right. Yeah. yeah. It just that's, sucks that men like this guy prey on women like that. Mm -hmm. That's just disturbing. Yeah. It, it's shitty that women have to change their behavior to avoid men like this. And I, it sucks that even just doing something routine, like going to a, a store late at night, they have to come in with heightened senses when they come out. Yeah. Like that sucks. That's pretty much like, that's kind of comparing to like a hunter and a prey. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you're, you're just like this prey wait, waiting to get attacked by a hunter. Like, yeah. Meanwhile, I walk out of a store at 1 a.m. I'm like 
fucking la di da. I don't care who's here. I, I got my exactly. headphones in. I'm not even looking. <laughs> just like yeah, exactly uh, mosey on over to my car that I parked at the other end of the parking lot because I didn't want to park next to anyone. So I just walk all the way down. <laughs> and it's just like the the difference between the mindset is is ridiculous and, and it's it is terrible. Good for her for trusting her instincts oh, yeah. and uh, that was a baller move the way she got yeah. out. That was smart. I was I was on the edge of my seat. I yeah, was you ready were like, to don't don't do it. Yeah, when you said she rolled down the window even further, I'm, I'm like, like Girl. what is you doing? <laughs> but she only did it just so she doesn't have yeah, to run yeah, his, yeah. his ass over. I should have known. She's writing the story. She's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she she's all right. She's all right. That's it for the Reddit portion of this week's episode. Stick around after the ad break, and you will be hearing this day in history featuring the release of To Kill a Mockingbird back in July 11, 1960. We'll be right back. Do you have a fur baby and you want to spoil them because they're oh so adorable? Ain't that right, Obi? Then look no further than BarkBox. BarkBox is a monthly subscription service that provides your derpy best friend, like this guy, with amazing surprises. Each box gives you amazing value of up to $40 worth of toys and yummy treats, like Beta from Jurassic World, and they give you raptor scraps. Once you subscribe, you can mark your calendar since most boxes arrive within just five days. The next thing you know, you get a knock from your local neighborhood delivery person and watch your pup get excited from all the amazing surprises they get. Within the package, they receive monthly themed curations from franchises such, like I said, Jurassic World, Stranger Things, Spider-Man, and many more. To give the gift of love to your amazing puppers, go ahead and click the link below on our profile. Welcome back, Wikimaniacs, to This Day in History, a series where we take you back in time to learn more about what happened on this day throughout history. Today's date is July 11, 2022, but we are going to open our books and head back to the 1960s. No, we're not going back to another concert. However, we will be exploring another form of art there, being that art of literature. Just a heads up and a gentle trigger warning will be in place because there is a mention of brief sexual assault. However, there is no graphic detail shared and there will be some brief discussions about racism. So please proceed with absolute caution. The infamous book, To Kill a Mockingbird, is kind of more likely something that some people might have heard of. It probably slid across your desk in high school or was once a book cover that you laid eyes on when you went to your local library. Maybe you're a fan of a book, or if you're just like myself, you probably spark notes it the whole time just to get your way through your English class back in high school. Whatever the case may be, it is fairly well known around North America, and it is for good reason. So dust off your library card, make a cup of sweet tea, and get cozy as we take a trip down the literature lane. Sixty-two years ago today, To Kill a Mockingbird was released by author Harper Lee. So the author, Nell Harper Lee, was born on April 28, 1926 in Monroeville, Alabama. Nell, who obviously went by their pen name of Harper Lee, actually had quite the experience growing up. This experience would particularly influence her work with To Kill a Mockingbird. So for those tuning in who perhaps have never heard of the book before, let's kind of break down the synopsis a little bit and see where real life meets fiction. So the story is told through the eyes of the main character, Jean Louise Fitch, and it takes place in the 1930s. Jean, along with her brother Jeremy, lived with their widowed father, Atticus, in a fictional town within the real state of Alabama, kind of exactly where Harper was born. So Jeremy and Jean are joined by their friend Dill for the summer. During their summer adventures, the three kids razz each other up with the local lure of Arthur Boo Radley. Boo is referred to as a recluse, which provides more imaginations to the kids when trying to figure out who exactly Boo is. Simultaneously, Atticus is assigned Tom Robinson, a black man who has been accused of raping a young local white woman. Although this case has many of the locals up in arms with their own theories, gleam with racist undertones, Atticus agrees to defend Tom. The story weaves in the discussions of equality, racism, justice, classism, and so much more. With that said, it is not shocking from a 2022 perspective that when this book was released on this day in 1960, it had a lot of people talking. So now the real life connection from Harper's life into her book reads a little something like this. So according to Wikipedia, Harper's father, Amasa Coleman Lee, was reportedly a man of many hats. One of those hats had him working as a lawyer, 
One of France's case involved defending two black men accused of murdering a white storekeeper. Not only was Harper's dad the presumed inspiration for the character Atticus, but she even used her mother's maiden name of Finch as the last name for Jean, Jeremy, and Atticus. To Kill a Mockingbird would eventually win a Pulitzer Prize, which for those who don't know, according to Wikipedia, this is the most prestigious award and it's an achievement involving for newspaper, magazine, online journalism, literature, and musical composition within the United States. Needless to say this, it is a pretty big deal that she won a Pulitzer Prize, and Harper's novel actually even made its way to the big screen in 1962. The movie featured names such as Gregory Peck, Robert Duvall, Mary Badham, and many more. Harper reportedly passed away in her 89th trip around this earth on February 19 of 2016. And although she is no longer physically with us today, her works, including To Kill a Mockingbird, will live on forever. That Wikimaniacs is what happened on July 11th, 1960. Thank you once again to our amazing writer, Alex Anarbaki from Weird Distractions Podcast. Make sure to check her out. Make sure to show her some love. And now back to your boys, Josh and Sean. That's it this week, Wikimaniacs. We would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, engage with us on TikTok, YouTube, join our Discord, and make sure to tell your friends all about us. We will see you this Friday for another Am I the Asshole episode. But until then, toodles. Bye. Bye, Sean. Who Sean's laptop sucks. Laptop. <laughs> <laughs>